In today's video, I'm going to show you a piece of software that will allow you to control your LEGO train layout easily from a PC. I want to stress the word easily here. The software we will be using is called the Brick Automation Project, which may sound intimidating to some, but rest assured we won't be doing any programming or automation in this video. So who is this video for? Let's say you have a set of switch tracks towards the back of your layout that are hard to reach. Maybe an amusement park with motorized rides you wish to control. Or maybe you want an easy alternative to controlling a half dozen locomotives without using a half dozen remote controls. The software also supports multi-unit operation, such as dual motors or using multiple powered locomotives in a single train. All without third-party firmware. So let's dig in. The software is easily downloaded through the Microsoft Store. Just search Brick Automation Project and install it. You will need to have Bluetooth LE on your PC. Most laptops and many PCs will have this already, but a USB Bluetooth adapter can be purchased very cheaply. In fact, I would recommend a USB adapter since in my testing it allowed for more devices to be connected at once. We'll go into more depth on this towards the end of the video. We'll start with the basics. Controlling a motor from the software. I'm going to use a city hub in this example along with the boost motor. Bluetooth scanning should be running already, but can be started and stopped with the button on the top left. Then simply press the button on the hub and it should connect. The software should detect which type of motor is connected, and we can use the slider to control the speed of the motor. I love how simple this is to get up and running. To me it's much easier than using the powered up app, which has many limitations. Now, let's control our locomotives. In the first example, we have a train with a single motor connected on port A and a set of lights connected on port B. The software detects what devices are connected and we can start controlling our train immediately. Controlling the motor with the slider and controlling the lights with the buttons. In the past, I've had to use a combination of the official LEGO firmware and pie bricks to control trains with dual motors or multiple powered locomotives. This software can handle those situations easily, along with many others. For example, a crocodile locomotive that uses powered up motors instead of train motors. Let's set up a passenger train with powered locomotives on each end. I'm going to connect the hub for the front locomotive and click configure. I like to use colors to tell my trains apart, so we'll use orange for this train. First, I'll give the hub a name and click rename hub. This will save the name locally to the hub. The color option here is for the hub's onboard LED. I typically match them to the train anyway, so I will select orange. The port should automatically detect which devices are connected just as before. The MU option stands for multi-unit, which we will be using for this train, so I'll set it to orange as well. Now click OK, and we'll move on to the rear locomotive. All the steps will be the same as before, except I will add an R to the name for rear, and click the checkbox to invert direction. This will reverse the direction of the motor. Don't forget to set the MU setting to match your other locomotive, and if all the settings are correct, the locomotive should move the train as one unit. No more modifications to turn the motor around physically. Now, let's set up a train with dual motors. In the past, I have used pie brakes for my dual motor locomotives. I will link this video in the description below, but in this mind, this solution is much simpler. I'll use my blue locomotive as an example. First, we'll name the hub, set the LED color, invert the direction of one of the motors, and set the multi-unit color on both motors. It's that easy. I'm going to do the same for my green locomotive since it also uses dual motors. Lastly, let's use a hub to control the switch tracks. 
If you've seen my last video on Switch Tracks, you know I love to find solutions to control them remotely, just like a real model train set. I'm going to be using the example from the L-Gage website. We use the City Hub and two of the We Do motors. These motors also appeared in a few other sets, such as the app-controlled Batmobile. Again, you are free to find your own solutions using other powered up motors or hubs. Once you have everything connected, we can change the ports from motor to switch standard. In my case, I'm going to invert directions on both switches, but you can set them to whatever makes sense for your layout. Again, the multi-unit option can be used to tie switches together. I have a few more things to cover in this video, but if you found anything useful, be sure to hit the like button so that others may find it as well. Controllers can be connected to the software as well. I have used a controller to control the Switch Track Hub, and this works great, although it can have a bit of lag if many devices are connected or if too many actions are sent consecutively. Again, this will all depend on your Bluetooth adapter and other Bluetooth devices that are near enough to interfere. I've heard interference can be a nightmare at conventions. I'll show the settings I use for my controller to control switch tracks, but I'm not going to go any further with sensors or sequences to automate your layout in this video. I'm still learning this part of the software, and as far as I know, there won't be any updates in the future. The last update was released in 2020. Still, I'm very grateful for this software. Even in its current state, it is extremely useful. I would love to find a solution to offload some of the controls away from Bluetooth. As an example, the powered up hubs can be programmed to send IR commands to power functions receivers using the color sensor. Unfortunately, using this function means a smart device such as a phone would be controlling the hub, so it wouldn't be able to connect to the Brick Automation Project software in the same way. I did a fair bit of testing before making this video. In my experience, the built-in Intel Bluetooth adapters I tried seemed to only support six devices at a time, while using the USB Bluetooth adapters allowed me to connect up to 12. If I tried more than six with the Intel Bluetooth adapter, the seventh device simply wouldn't connect. When using an external USB Bluetooth adapter, I could connect 12 devices, and when I tried to connect a 13th device, it would disconnect all of the other hubs. This is the opposite experience I had with Pybrix, where the internal Bluetooth adapters seem to work better overall. I'll link the two USB adapters I tested in the description below. If your PC has Bluetooth built in, you'll want to disable the internal adapter and then connect to your USB adapter. I also recommend using Windows Update to make sure you have the latest driver. This will be under Optional Updates, after plugging in the device and checking for new updates. This was the case for both adapters I tested, but you may need to go to the manufacturer's website to find the latest driver. I tried my best to be as thorough as possible in this tutorial, but if you feel I missed anything, be sure to leave a comment below as well as any questions you may have. Thank you for watching, and remember to play well.